Collagen Induction Therapy, Microneedling Part 1, presented by Herbal Skin Solutions. In this series, we will cover what specifically microneedling is and how it works on a cellular level, scope of practice, and the differences between rollers versus electronic devices. All very important information to take into account when considering onboarding this treatment into your practice. So let's dive right in. Microneedling has many alias names, also known as percutaneous collagen induction, PCI, collagen induction therapy, CIT, dermal rolling, skin rolling, skin needling, and microchanneling. We utilize these tiny needles in the cartridges or in the rollers to create a micro injury, which basically tricks the brain into thinking that the body is injured thus releasing a plethora of collagen-producing cells. By creating this controlled injury, we are initiating the body's repair response system. And by creating these microchannels, we're able to effectively infuse beneficial product ingredients, such as growth factors and hyaluronic acid. This helps to enhance the results. Now, we see this treatment as being much more effective than laser and chemical peels as it works on a cellular level, addresses collagen types 1 and 3, creates new collagen instead of scar collagen, scar tissue, and is safe for all skin types. Now let's get into the cellular process. Here you'll see a diagram to show the wound healing cascade. The first step is the injury. Now, if pinpoint bleeding is achieved, we then coagulate that blood on the surface of the skin. The vasoconstriction temporarily occurs to reduce hemorrhaging. Then inflammation, which is the body's way of protecting itself by rejecting foreign substances, takes place. This is why it's very important to use only ingredients that are naturally occurring in the body and deemed as safe for microneedling with the treatment. Step four is the growth factor emission. Our white blood cells, our macrophages, are imperative for healing. They're sent out to the site to remove bacteria, aid in cell and tissue renewal during the proliferative stage, which is the stage of rapid reproduction of cells and tissues. Our collagen producing cells, our fibroblasts, then multiply, which reduces inflammation and forms new tissue our collagen and elastin then begins to build. And here you will see another slide to demonstrate just that. You'll see day one and day two in phase one, the controlled injury is administered. And the day after the controlled injury, our cytokines and growth factors are released. Our neutrophils and our white blood cells, our monocytes, that are imperative for healing are sent out to remove that bacteria and prevent infection. Phase two is sending out our white blood cells found in our immune system, our macrophages. These are the cells that aid in cell and tissue renewal during the proliferative stage. You know, that stage we talked about where we have rapid reproduction of cells and tissue. And since the injured area is now covered in new tissue, it forms a barrier for the wound and the angiogenesis process, the formation of new blood cells takes place. Then our collagen and elastin is then replaced and remolded. Our cell to cell communication is stabilized and continuous results continue to build for up to, get this, two years. One treatment stimulates these collagen-producing fibroblast cells for up to two years. Pretty neat. Here you'll see a diagram to show cosmetic versus medical grade microneedling. Cosmetic needling is considered to be up to 0.3 millimeters deep into the epidermis. Cosmetic needling addresses age management preventative preventative for pigmentation, and it tightens and tones lax skin. The healing time is much shorter for cosmetic needling than medical needling, as medical needling 
works much deeper to address more serious skin concerns such as scarring, acne, thermal, and surgical, deep lines and wrinkles, stretch marks, and cellulite. Now, I see cellulite as being the skin concern that you would need to work the deepest at, around 2.0 to 2.5 millimeters deep, because you have to work in the subcutaneous area to get the quickest and most effective result with microneedling by getting into the subcutaneous layer and breaking up the fat deposits. Now, since you're working on the highest medical depth, there will also be longer healing time. And when we're talking about what depths to needle on, it's very important to take your scope of practice into consideration. And to find out whether or not you are legally allowed to perform microneedling under your aesthetic or tattooing license, you should call your state board of cosmetology. If approved to perform the service, you will then need to apply for Sharp's disposal. You can do so with your local health department. Your health department may even supply you with Sharps containers. If not, they can be purchased from just about any medical supply or from Amazon. The next step will be calling your insurance carrier to make sure that you are covered to perform the service. And with coverage goes covering yourself by making sure you have all informed consent in place. Now, Herbal Skin Solutions does provide all CIT pen providers with sample consent forms and medical health questionnaire forms that can be edited to fit your business's needs. Diving into types of needling devices, you'll see there are quite a few options on the market. There are stamps and rollers, electronic devices, and skin stamping vials that can be filled with toxins such as Dysport, Botox, and fillers like Juvederm. There's also nano infusion. And some devices, such as the CIT pin, that do both nano infusion and microneedling. So you really get the most bang for your buck with a professional device. So let's compare them all. You'll see dermal rollers come in many shapes and sizes in different depths and different numbers of needles within the roller. Now, regardless of how micro rollers are marketed, they should only be used for one-time use and immediately discarded. A fun little science experiment you can see, um, you can do to see firsthand that the rollers should be discarded immediately are taking a used roller and washing it with OSHA-approved sterilizer, something very strong that most clients will not even have at home, like barbicide. Wait for that to dry, and then place the roller under UV light. I like to place it under a skin scope or a skin scanner. Dim the lights and see all of the glowing white particles. Notice all of those glowing white particles in the device, those are the skin proteins that never fully detach upon cleaning the roller. Gross, right? That is how cross-contamination bacteria spreads. So, please, if you decide to use a roller or even microneedling cartridges, either way, the needles should be discarded immediately after the first use and never to be saved. Let's take a look at electronic devices. Power to the device allows for the cartridge to move up and down quickly. Penetrating quickly helps to make this a much more comfortable treatment. You're able to cover more area more quickly and evenly. Many devices have options for corded or uncorded options. The CIT is battery operated, however you can use it while plugged into the wall adapter if you like. The CIT pin comes with two batteries that operate on a full charge for up to four hours and take 15 minutes to reach a full charge.
There are various speeds and depths with electronic devices. The CIT pin works on depths of 0.25 all the way up to 2.5, so you can customize the treatment depending on the skin concerns that you're working on. There are five speeds with the CIT pin to adjust to your client's comfort. The advantages of the electronic devices really outweigh using rollers in my opinion. They're easily customizable so you can really customize a treatment depending on your unique client and their skin concerns. For example, the area, the forehead area will be addressed on a much lower depth than the cheeks where we have more fatty tissue and muscle. And if you were working with a roller, you would not be able to customize that treatment. It's easier to treat small areas. It's much more affordable in the long run because the cartridges are priced less than replacing rollers after one-time use. The disposable cartridges eliminate risk of cross-contamination and again, there's less discomfort due to the adjustable depth and speed. Now let's talk about the disposable cartridges. Again, dermal rollers and needle cartridges should be discarded immediately after one-time use. The needle cartridges are to be disposed of in a sharps container. Now the CIT pin cartridges offer a silicone lock on all cartridges to prevent backflow or migration of bodily fluids into the device. All cartridges are sterilized in EO gas and placed in tamper-free packaging. There are many materials of cartridges on the market such as stainless steel, titanium, silver, or gold plated. We use stainless steel titanium materials as silver and gold plated has more chances for client side effects. Now that we've covered what microneedling is and how it works on a cellular level, scope of practice, and the difference between rollers versus electronic devices, we have wrapped up this series and we will see you in microneedling part two.